Formula 1 is back with the 8th round of the 2018 season and some massive news has broken out uh, between the 7th round of the season and here at round 8. The first bit of news is that Sergio Perez has now been sacked from the Mercedes driver program. Mercedes say that they are upset and extremely unhappy with the way Perez has been treating the Mercedes team after obviously uh, having an ankle injury, being advised by all team personnel and doctors to stay away from sports for a time being, for them only to go and be playing tennis and then to obviously injure his ankle and be out for the rest of the season. Mercedes say however that they will support Sergio Perez in trying to find a new seat for the F1 2019 season, but it will not be in a Mercedes powered car. Red Bull have officially announced after their team meeting that they're going to be selling Toro Rosso at the end of this season. Red Bull say that they're now going to be ditching the little the driver program that they currently hold within Formula 1 of Red Bull drivers going into Toro Rosso before moving into Red Bull Racing. They said they want to be as competitive as possible with Red Bull and try and earn some money and some sponsors back into their teams. We understand that both Jaguar and Porsche are interested in getting a takeover on Toro Rosso. It's been officially confirmed as well that Sebastian Vettel will leave Ferrari at the end of the season. We believe that Sebastian Vettel is unhappy with uh, the team management at Ferrari and feels that it is now time to move on. He understands that Ferrari is a fantastic team and is really happy driving the Ferrari car but he's not happy with this staff and the management at Ferrari and that has caused him to leave the team and he will no longer be there come the end of the season. Finally, after the court case has come around, it has officially been confirmed that Thomas Fox was found not guilty to using any forms of drugs after the samples that he had were actually mistaken and misused. It has been officially confirmed that doctors used a sample which was from Thomas Fox as part of the drugs test, but it was accidentally mixed up with a different sample and with doctors just saying, yep, there's drugs in this sample, they got it completely wrong. Thomas Fox has said that he's first of all really happy to uh, have been shown that it was that he was not obviously uh, using any forms of drugs and now he says he's on to plan B of his entire moves. He says secondly he is now looking to try and get his three championships reinstated after they were removed because of the drugs use now that that's been proven that that was completely false he wants those championships reinstated to him and secondly he's now going to be looking further into how on earth the doctors made this crucial mistake what did they do and, and he is looking to try and take some form of punishment towards these people. We'll get more hopefully when we find out a bit more about it and finally now moving on in to the uh, news for F1 here in the practice session. Mercedes-Benz are looking strong here at uh, the USA Grand Prix with a lot of pace uh, under their car. Obviously, with a bit of a poor season for Mercedes-Benz, they're looking to try and fight back here in USA. Ferrari and Red Bull looking very, very uh, competitive between the pair of each other. Both of them struggling to match the pace of Mercedes-Benz, but they're both very, very closely matched. And also McLaren looking strong here at uh, Cota after a few difficult races. But without further ado, let's get into round eight of the USA Grand Prix. Yo, what's going on guys? It is FoxyDude98 here and welcome back to a brand new video for you guys today here on the channel. Today we are back here for the 8th round of the F1 journey here at the USA Grand Prix. First of all, I just want to apologise for this not being uh, uploaded last week. I had to explain it a few times, obviously because I got a lot of questions and I never really said anything about it. Basically, for the F1 journey, last week I've been extremely busy with university and university is my number one priority in life ahead of YouTube. And obviously, uh, because I did so much work uh, on the, in university, I just didn't have enough time to record the F1 journey as it is the series which takes the longest to record and the longest to make when really. it takes a few hours to it takes about three to four hours to make these videos so they are very very time consuming also following this i've actually made a couple of changes to the script for the f1 journey obviously i'm not going to say what parts of the script i've changed um but um yeah i have made a few script changes which you may have already seen maybe or they may made to come you never know um but yeah i did make some changes to the script and uh, obviously that meant that I had to put a bit of time just to work that out uh, and obviously also I've been doing some preparation for the F1 journey season 2 as I have now completed the entire driver lineup for season 2 and also all the teams that are entered into season 2 so in answer to that other question yes there will be a second season as this is my favourite series in uh, out of everything no matter how many views it gets but anyway as we move on then to the USA Grand Prix uh, unfortunately for me I was really struggling a lot now obviously uh, trying to learn a uh, how to race on F1 with no corner line. For me, I work very, very hard with the brake marker boards. But in this track especially, 
it's pretty damn impossible to even find brake marker boards, especially in the S section in the first sector. And as you can see, I'm trying to go out here on a second lap, improve on my first lap, and as you can see, I went wide and uh, it just didn't work out there. The rain was starting to fall anyway, um, but I felt like I could just gain a little bit more time and uh, try and get myself higher up the grid. And unfortunately, I just wasn't able to get it done on the next lap. And as you can see, we qualified down in P7, but luckily for myself, my championship rival, Max Verstappen, has actually only qualified in P6. So we're off to a pretty decent start to the weekend and Mercedes-Benz showing their form with a 1-2 here in uh, qualifying so uh, they're looking good as Rosberg qualifies all the way down in P13 a long long way off the pace and again Rosberg just hasn't had any pace ever since we started uh, this uh, season to be honest but anyway then moving on into the race then we're going to be going for the one-stop strategy here today we're going to be going for the ultra softs over to a set of soft tires. I'm going to take those to the end of the race because I feel like if I'm going to win this race, I'm going to need track position. We've got five red lights and it is lights out. We go here to start the USA Grand Prix. It's been a decent start from us actually uh, down in seventh place. We're going to move for that inside line. Remember, this turn one is massively wide. And as you can see, going in towards the first corner now, we just about jump in front of Max Verstappen and also one of the Red Bulls. I believe that is Carlos Sainz there. Side by side with Sebastian Vettel, but we're just not going to be able to get it. It's Daniel Ricciardo here. Tries to find a way past Lewis Hamilton. Unfortunately for Ricardo, he's not going to find a way past Hamilton there as we all swoop through the S section. We're now going to look down the field a little bit here and see what's going on further back now. As Fernando Stoffel van Dorn here in the McLaren having a little look through uh, the S section. One of the four seen is Pascal Verlein just behind here with Hulkenberg attacking now. And uh, all seems to be good in the mid pack, but it's at the front of the field where drama is starting to come along here as we now are in fourth place here trying to hunt down Vettel and also Daniel Ricardo. Hamilton off to a brilliant start though here in his Mercedes. There it is. Hamilton Hamilton, Ricardo, Vettel, myself, Verstappen, and it seems that we're all starting to close up to each other as we head down this long straight now in towards this hairpin corner. Who's going to make a move? Vettel moves over to try and cover me up. I'm going to break over late on Vettel. I broke a bit too late, actually, and went for an unexpected double overtake there and gets Daniel Ricardo as well. I was only expecting to overtake Sebastian Vettel, but... I managed to get Vettel and Ricardo, so I'm not going to complain. You know, I uh, I always uh, like to uh, gain some positions. But for Daniel Ricardo, his race is not going so well. As you can see, I'm already starting to pull away a little bit. Hamilton is off to a flyer of a start right now. And I'm just trying to get myself settled in. But here on to lap three of the Grand Prix now. DRS is enabled. There's Hamilton and myself. And Max Verstappen, my championship rival, overtakes Daniel Ricciardo. And he is up into third place. And now he can set his sights on hunting me down. And unfortunately for myself, it doesn't take him that long. In fact, it's on the next lap that he gets towards me. In fairness, though, I was less than a second clear of Ricciardo in the first place anyway. But there you can see it's Daniel Ric uh, Lewis Hamilton up in the background. You can already see that we're dropping Ricciardo. But Verstappen now with some DRS here. Here comes uh, Max Verstappen now towards the inside line. Two championship rivals. Now clashing here at Cota in towards the headpin corner. Verstappen on the inside. I'm on the outside. Verstappen locks up, bumps into my car a little bit there, but compromises his line. And we just hold on to Verstappen there. So uh, it's quite clear from Max. You know, he locked up a bit, a little bit of uh, bumping. So uh, this might get a little bit physical between myself and Verstappen in terms of car hitting, okay? Not real life hitting. Uh, but as we can come in towards turn one now, we actually break quite late here. And in towards the first corner, I've missed the apex. And Verstappen there being very cheeky. I didn't even notice that. Snuck his nose in there. And that was something that I really wasn't actually good at. My breaking point into the first corner was awful. And every single time, Verstappen, and I needed to be wary of that after that incident there, I now needed to be uh, watch out in my breaking zone. Because if I run a little bit wide on the apex, then I'm going to have a little Ferrari sticking his front wing in there. And obviously, I don't want to smash off Verstappen's wing uh, because that would just be really, really unfair. But onto lap nine of the Grand Prix now. Verstappen here attacking once again, covering the inside line. And then I feel like I'm going to go back on the racing line here. But Verstappen still carries the speed. I thought I had the corner covered. And that's why I moved back to the inside line. But Verstappen not giving this one up without a fight. And he's going to go right to the outside here. We're going to cover him off, open the steering wheel and forced him very close off the track and obviously you can see that we gain the position we have every right to shove Verstappen as wide as possible and that will make him back out as the back end slides there on the exit of the corner tyres are going off and this is our scheduled uh, pit lap so this is when we're going to be coming in for our one and only stop onto a set of soft tyres and I do believe that everyone else around me at the moment is going to be making the one stop as Verstappen actually carries on in this Grand Prix. Lewis Hamilton pitted a lot earlier, about two laps earlier than myself so that suggests to me that Hamilton is going for the two stop strategy of ultra soft, ultra soft and then super soft for the end of the race which will mean he'll have to lose time in the pit stops uh, but he'll be a lot faster 
out there on track. However, as you can clearly see, so far in this race, getting track position is working really nicely for myself. So I'm going to maintain uh, the one-stop strategy because I want track position as one of the Red Bulls there. I believe that is uh, Carlos Sainz has actually jumped Vettel in the pit stop. So good work there as we rejoin in a lot of traffic and actually make a bit of contact there with one of the Williams cars. And that's uh, Esteban Ocon sneaking through there. So Ocon capitalizing on myself in the Williams car, uh, having a little bit of a jostle there. And as we look further back now in all of this is actually Daniel Ricciardo who's gone for a set of ultra soft tyres. So he's doing the two stop as well. Um, and he, I managed to rejoin in front of Ricardo after he went for the undercut. And this is Ricardo now stuck in the traffic here. And uh, as you can see now, he's trying to attack one of the uh, Williams guys at Sorokin as we go in towards this uh, hairpin corner. Ricardo double lock up there from him, but he makes the move stick. Now Pierre Gasly wants in on this fight as he goes and gets shoved very, very wide here. And uh, Sorokin not going to give this one without a fight. And fair play to Sergei Sorokin. He holds up Gasly and he's also holding up Sainz here. And as you can see here on lap 10, I now need to get past my teammate. Nico Rosberg in this Grand Prix. We get a fabulous run from the second to last corner in towards the final corner. We're going for it here on Nico Rosberg. I can't afford to get held up by his back markers because Verstappen is in the pits. I need to get out in front of him as we carry on now on the pit straight here. DRS enabled. We're attacking Hulkenberg. There comes Verstappen, the championship rival, out of the pits in towards the first corner. Dive on Hulkenberg. Got to make sure he gets sick. Round the outside of Verstappen. Super tight. Super close. But job done. Back up into second place in this Grand Prix. Verstappen doesn't get the undercut uh, done on us. And we stay in front of him for the time being as Hamilton is staying out on a set of ultra soft tyres. So Hamilton, like I said before, is doing that two stop and he's got a 12 second gap. So I'm really, I need to do two things now. I want to hold my position on Verstappen. If I can beat Verstappen, any points I can gain out of him is again, look, missed the breaking point. Verstappen though, this time side by side, I went way too deep into the corner. But Verstappen actually backs out of it into the right hander and doesn't really put up much of a fight there. I thought he'd really go for it, but he kind of really didn't. But onto that 15 of the Grand Prix now and to Ricardo obviously pitted for ultra soft tyres. Now the ultra softs are uh, much faster than soft tyres. So uh, but Ricardo attacking Verstappen now and it's time for me to play a cheeky little game here. So I'm actually going to cover the line and I'm covering off Verstappen but I'm not covering off Ricardo there. I'm sort of being a little cork in the bottle here and that's given Ricardo a perfect opportunity to get past Verstappen. Can Ricardo do it? Yes he can. He's up in front of Verstappen and that does, does mean Verstappen is down into fourth place and uh, what I did there is in that hairpin is oh that's super close between myself and Ricardo again going too deep into that corner but what I'm cheekily doing there was Verstappen and Ricardo was side by side. So I wanted to obviously get a better line into the hairpin. So I decided to go and basically box Verstappen in. And that meant that Ricardo could just swoop around the outside. Verstappen was boxed in, had nowhere to go. And obviously now I need to hold my position on Daniel Ricardo. I'm just playing the defensive game today. I'm in America. I'm basically my own wall, effectively. And as you can see now, coming in towards the hairpin, Ricardo going to go for that outside line once again. Verstappen, though, I also need to worry about because he's close behind. But in towards the inside line here, we cover that one off. Ricardo there, still fighting a little bit, but we stay in front of Daniel Ricardo. And we are still in second place. Hamilton, 16.6 .6 seconds up the road. So he's now starting to worry me because he might actually get a pit stop's advantage at this rate with all the fighting that we're having to do here. And unfortunately, it's not about attacking drivers. It's about defending from drivers because the Audi car just didn't feel nice around here. And obviously, like I said in the uh, qualifying, the brake marker boards just didn't help. And you can see here into the sector last corner running horribly wide again because I just don't really have like an accurate point to break. And Hamilton is actually in for a brand new set of Super soft tyres. You can see him in the pits there. He has made the change. 17.1 seconds was the gap. Will we get out in front of Lewis Hamilton here? Yes, we will. We're up into the lead of the USA Grand Prix. We cover off the inside line here and in towards turn one. How I didn't... I don't... I think I should have got a corner cutting warning for that personally. Uh, watching that back now, I definitely chopped turn one a little bit there. So I'm lucky not to get a corner cutting warning there. But now, on to lap 17, I've got a bit of an advantage here. And Vettel is out of the race. So Sebastian Vettel is out of the USA Grand Prix. That is horrible of Sebastian. He's obviously leaving Ferrari at the end of the season. And as you can see now, Verstappen is under some more pressure. Ricardo is pitted for his second stop. Hamilton is obviously absolutely flying on fresh super soft tyres. And he goes and flies past Max Verstappen up into second place down in the Grand Prix. And that's brilliant for me in the championship. But now I need to be very, very careful because on to lap 20 of the Grand Prix, Obviously, Hamilton flew past Verstappen on worn soft tyres. So now he's going to catch up to me on worn soft tyres. 
much, much faster than he caught to Max Verstappen. And now I have to do even more defending against a different car this time. I've defended against Verstappen. I've defended against Ricardo. Now I've got to defend it against Lewis Hamilton. So as you can see now, coming towards the uh, the hairpin, Hamilton opts to the outside line. I actually make contact there with Lewis Hamilton as I try to basically get closer to Lewis to get a better line in towards the corner. I actually banged onto his uh, rear tyre there. So uh, my bad, Lewis. But as we come now onto the end of lap 20, start lap 21, Hamilton getting a sneaky little look there in the last corner again, just missing the braking points. It was horrible all race long to just find out where to break here. But as you can see, we've got a two tenths of a second gap. Hamilton going for an attack here in towards the first corner. And I'm going to defend this one. And we go in towards turn one now, very, very deep into the corner. Hamilton tries to switch back line, doesn't work for him. And it is myself versus Hamilton versus Verstappen versus Carlos Sainz in this Grand Prix. I believe it is Sainz that uh, is close in the mix here as we enter uh, lap 21 this time going towards the, uh, the back straight here and this time I need a very good exit here we don't get a bad exit actually out of this zone yeah it's definitely Carlos Sainz there so the four of us fighting hard for position now as Lewis Hamilton opens up the DRS here with Max Verstappen uh, close behind Hamilton this time off to the inside line towards this hairpin it's a mixture every single time Hamilton locks up in towards this hairpin that's going to shove me a little bit wide but I'm still going to fight this one here Hamilton very very tight around the outside line here and he's still there on the outside line we have to give it everything we've got and we do what we did against Max Verstappen open up the steering wheel ever so slightly and allow ourselves to stay in front of Lewis Hamilton but the battle is not done yet as we're now in lean fuel mixture we're actually trying to save some fuel here because I'm actually low on fuel and I need rich mix to defend against Hamilton because at the moment I'm just def uh, defending in standard mixture and it's just not helping me at this stage of the race so now I need to do lean fuel mixture everywhere where I can't get overtaken and then bump it up into rich mix to really defend myself and here comes Lewis Hamilton now and as you can see clearly here we're actually slightly further in front going into the hairpin and that's because we're using the rich mixture so I knew from that point onwards and this is just a little bit further in front here I didn't actually catch this uh, on the uh, normal cams but I caught this on the replay cam I go super wide here into the triple right, right handers coming into now this uh, second to last corner here I go very wide once again Hamilton now looks to try and find a way past here Verstappen is actually boxed in by Carlos Sainz and Sainz cheekily squeezes his way around the outside and Verstappen has dropped yet another place down into force so my championship rival getting boxed in for the second time this race but Verstappen's not going to get this one out without a fight Hamilton goes for a move around the outside of me he doesn't make it stick Verstappen goes for a move around the uh, in down the inside of Carlos Sainz and he makes that one stick it is all going on here in this USA Grand Prix everyone scrapping for positions now as we bump the car into rich mixture here onto lap 24 now of the USA Grand Prix Hamilton going to go for that outside line I'm going to cover the inside line bump it down into standard mix now into lean mixture trying to save even more fuel and I have to take a step at the second jab at the steering there because I was going to quarter cut there and I was kind of unaware of how many corner cutting warnings I have. I don't know if I had one or two at this stage in the race. So obviously I didn't want to get a corner cutting warning for a, and a penalty uh, for going and uh, cutting that hairpin. So I had to, to sort of make a second attempt at that uh, steering as Charles Leclerc is out of this uh, Grand Prix. So upsetting there for the BMW Sauber driver as we go in towards this hairpin. Hamilton trying a switch back there. I am probably making him very, very angry right now because I am just not giving up this position. And once again, this one-stop strategy, it's, ha it's hard. It's hard. It's not really working brilliantly, but what is working well is the fact that my defending is working perfectly and track position really working well. But on towards this pitch straight now, towards the outside and towards turn one, Hamilton goes for a move, but he's actually locked up ever so slightly towards turn one. That's compromised his line. Verstappen is actually quick to react to this one, and now it's going to be a fight. Hamilton versus Max Verstappen. In towards the S section we go. Can Hamilton hold on? Will Verstappen make the move stick? Verstappen sneaks it into second place, shoves Hamilton off the track. Sainz as well comes in and sneaks his way through. What a brilliant piece piece of attack in there from uh, Verstappen there. Very, very quick on that one, but it's Carlos Sainz now that's under a little bit of pressure here because Lewis Hamilton dropping from second down into fourth place, and he's been leading pretty much all race long. He now needs his positions back, and as we come in towards the hairpin now, Hamilton locks up once again, and he's actually got Pierre Gasly behind him now, so all these cars really fighting, and Ricardo's coming up to the back of this as well. On to lap 27. Verstappen is in my slipstream now, but he doesn't go for the move yet. Hamilton versus uh, Carlos Sainz now in towards this hairpin corner. Hamilton Hamilton gets the move done on Carlos Sainz and he's back up into third place. Now I just need him to try and sneak up to Verstappen and get in front of him as we go close to uh, Nico Carey there. But on to the last lap of the Grand Prix now. We're coming around the second to last corner here. And now on towards the final corner. They have been held up by Nico Carey a lot. But as you can see, it has been a hectic USA Grand Prix. But we've come out on top here at Kota. And that is another win here today. And it is 
probably not even deserved, but I made sure that I had the one-stop strategy. And as you can see there, we coming out on top, and there we are celebrating here at Kota. And uh, yeah, I made sure that I did the one-stop, and I made sure that the only thing that I needed in this race, if I was going to win it, was track position. I knew how to defend, and it's what I'm best at. So as you can see, here's the full race classification. Myself ahead of Verstappen, Hamilton, Gasly, Sainz, Ricardo, Alonso, Van Dorn, Hulkenberg, and Rosberg getting all the points for Vettel and the clerk DNFing. So without further ado then, let's move on into the Drivers Championship and the Constructors Championship and see where we're at, the end of this USA Grand Prix. All right then, so as we have a look then at the Drivers Championship for the USA Grand Prix, we are now uh, on 158 points and we now have an 11 point gap over Max Verstappen in the Dual Drivers Championship. It is still very, very close, and we still got plenty of rounds to go in this season, so Verstappen is not out of it just yet. Carlos Sainz is in third in the championship now with 99 points, closing up to that 100-point mark, so Sainz doing an absolutely phenomenal job in the Red Bull this season. Sebastian Vettel, after another DNF today, is on 77 points, and it's actually very close between Vettel, Hamilton, and Ricardo, with Vettel on 77, Hamilton on 75, and Ricardo on 73, so they're all going to be having a scrap. Maybe Science might get pulled down into that scrap. Who knows? Pitt Gasly still lagging behind in the Red Bull on 58 points with Fernando Alonso on 39 points and McLaren Renault doing a stunning job. Hulkenberg is staying in front of Nico Rosberg who is on the 20 points. Rosberg on 19. Van Dorn on 17. And Esteban Ocon is on 17 points. Now just before I go any further, obviously Sorokin is on 2 points as well and Kibitza, Stroll, Hartley, Carrie, Verlaine, Bottas, Leclerc don't have any points yet. Now before I go any further into the Constructors' Championship, if you go back to the last episode of the F1 Journey, you'll see that in the Championship, Ocon had 13 points uh, and in this episode Ocon has 17 points but didn't score a point basically I actually forgot to edit Ocon's points from the last round so I've actually put them back on to this round so if you get confused on why Ocon all of a sudden has got four extra points uh, I didn't put them on in the last round when I should have so I put them back on in this round so I've made a correction to the championship standings no one mentioned it I just spotted it myself because I'm genius uh, but I'm stupid for forgetting in the first place but that is the driver's championship after round eight let's move on to the constructors championship and see where we're at. As we have a look then at the Constructors' Championship, uh, Ferrari still miles ahead. They're on 224 points. They still have a very, very big lead in the championship, despite Vettel DNFing Verstappen picking up 18 points is a very, very handy amount of points. Audi still in second on 177 points, basically all because of me. Rosberg doesn't really do anything. Uh, Red Bull uh, are on 157 points, still doing very, very well, and are still in front of Mercedes, who are on 148 points, but it's definitely going to be a big fight between Audi, uh, Red Bull, and Mercedes on who gets where in the Constructors' Championship. McLaren are pretty much solidified themselves in fifth place and have pretty much been there all season. They're on 57 points. It's going to be a good fight between Renault and Force India, uh, who's going to get that next uh, uh, championship in sixth. Williams still on two. Toros and BMW are still yet to score. But guys, that is going to be it for the F1 Journey Episode 8. If you have enjoyed it, feel free to drop it a like. That'd be absolutely awesome. If you're new around here as well, feel free to subscribe for some more Formula 1 content. If you do enjoy the content you do see on the channel, then feel free to subscribe, obviously. And guys, that is going to be it. Hopefully you have enjoyed it. I absolutely love this series. Hopefully you guys do too. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys next week, hopefully, unless, obviously, if I'm really busy, then I'll try and let you know in future if I can't make an episode. But hopefully, we'll see you guys next week for the next episode, where we do believe that we might have a demo being shown of the brand new engines that will be used for next season. So hopefully, uh, Ferrari, we believe, are going to do a testing at uh, Monza, where they're going to be testing out the new engine. So hopefully, we can get some footage of what they'll be like come uh, that race. But hopefully, you guys enjoyed the episode. I'll see you guys next time. Take care all. Peace.